All right. Well, I figured I'd show you what I've been working on a little bit more here coming out of that last video and uh, doing a couple things lately with PCBs, right? And part of that is all around this kind of scale project I've been working on. Now, this is the Bluetooth scale I made uh, a while back. And so it's all kind of hand wired inside and I wanted to improve that thing. And so that's what I've been working on. Um, it, it works really well, but I wanted it to be a little faster, wanted it to be a little bit more efficient, wanted it to be better. And so I've been working on that and this is my current prototype and this is the PCB that I was um, kind of fixing and helping get booted because, you know, I was having that boot problem. And so now I've got it up and running. I've got some test data uh, showing up on this thing. Now, this is a raw data feed. Uh, this thing's currently running. The ADC's clocked over 300 hertz. So getting a lot of really fast readings. And I, I could make it a lot uh, smoother. Right now it's very, very noisy because I'm trying to work on getting noise lower. And if I put any sort of smoothing, which I can do, uh, it, it lowers the noise too. But I want to see what the raw reads are looking like. And so, you know, I've got this RMS and that's that's basically the signal noise on these readings. And uh, it's very fast right now. That That's part of it. Um, I could, again, smooth this with some exponential moving averages and reduce the noise to like a tenth of what's currently on the screen. But again, I want to I want to test and fix noise right now. So I'm not not really focused on actually getting the scale working yet. So all that to say, um, you know, my main focus, like I said, make it faster and, and certainly speed's not going to be a problem compared to the old one because, you know, this old one you know, it, it took like a second to reach, you know, its weight. It's very, very stable. The trick to having speed and stability is low noise in the readings. And so that's currently, like I said, what I'm working on here. So you can see this RMS reading on the screen. You know, if, if I don't have anything else around, it's clocked about probably 0.15 on average, 0.15 grams RMS error on the readings, which is high. I, I want that you know, way lower and I can, like I said, easily make it lower by just doing some averaging and smoothing. This is actually the error in the raw reads going like 340 hertz. Um, so in that, one thing that I've noticed in testing is that um, if I just get close to this thing, you can actually see the noise tick up a little bit just from basically my, my body being a bit of a capacitive uh, source of noise. And, you know, that's probably, you know, the house hum and things like that. It really gets noisy whenever I plug it into a USB. So it's, you know, on battery right now running a little quieter. So what I'm planning on doing, I've got some copper tape and I've got some captain tape and I'm going to open this thing up and I'm going to see if I can shield the, uh, the leads to the load cell and um, shield maybe where the ADC is on this thing and see if that actually makes a difference. And again, right now I'm, I'm averaging like 0.15 as it is. So let's see if that actually makes any difference at all. So I do like these little scales from Greater Goods. They're just, you know, I've learned that they are a nice little platform for doing an espresso scale project just because the way they're made, they come apart really easy. I do wish they were just a bit roomier on the inside because it's been pretty tough to squeeze the PCB and everything I want to do on it in there. Uh, if they were just a touch thicker, it would make my life easier because then I could start using actual connectors instead of having to uh, hand solder everything. But the thing I'd like about them is that they are so thin. So, I mean, uh, that, that is part of the trade-off. They are very thin, and being very thin, it makes them kind of hard to, uh, to work on. One of the things is, obviously, if I could do my own custom enclosure, that would also help. But using somebody else's stuff, you know, you just, you got some limits. So, uh, as I said, I want to try to shield these wires, and I did get, looks like I touched it with the soldering iron. Hadn't caused any problems, but I probably want to make sure and uh, re-insulate that. But yeah, I'm going to try to shield this ADC area and shield these wires, and then I need to ground the shielding uh, back to the board, and maybe that will help on noise. All right, so I've got some, like I said, some captain tape just to do a little bit of insulation, because I do have some bare... Uh, traces and stuff coming up here, so don't want to short anything out whenever I put copper tape over it. Um, so let's see now. Uh, it's also going to be a booger just keeping this thing flexible might, might end up being a problem, but uh, that's a, a worry for when we get there. 
Now I'm gonna shield up here on the ADC. So the ADC, the analog part is just, it is all right in here. That's really all I gotta worry about. Um, it's basically just the front half of the chip and a, and a few things down there. So really not much analog circuitry. Um, the whole front end for the analog stuff is just all down here. This tape's supposed to be conductive and I've used it before. I actually have it because of uh, shielding uh, musical instruments whenever I do rewiring on a guitar bass or something. So let's get our uh, noise. Make sure that we've just got conductivity. Yeah, no problems. So now I just need to make sure that this thing uh, gets grounded to the board ground. And I do have um, a board ground right there that I can use. And that was one of my test pads that I had exposed. So I'm gonna just pull a wire and uh, tack that so that it grounds it. And then that, then, you know, at that point, we'll be able to see if it does anything. So I'll be right back. Yep. All right, so it's grounded. And uh, now I gotta get it back together and uh, see if we did any good. All right, got her back together. Let's see what it looks like, if it's any better or not. You know, doesn't look like a drastic difference to me. At least not in raw noise, but I guess one way to check is does it make much difference? I could convince myself that the proximity effect is maybe reduced a touch. Uh, but maybe maybe a touch more resistant to uh, to RF. I'm gonna go uh, put it next to the laptop, see if it, it jumps up. So allow me to apologize a bit for the quality of the video here, but I had to go into the different room where I've got the laptop plugged into its power supply. And uh, this is where you can really start to see a difference because I've got this thing uh, really close next to the laptop here. And um, if I, well, Let's see if I can do this with uh, keeping you focused here. If I um, do the little hand trick, not, not a lot. Now here's the unshielded one, and I'll put it in the exact same spot. So you see immediately this one just has more RMS error, and if I put my hand over it, you can see how much it jumps. So the shielding has seemed to work. Now in the other room where there's not you know an RF source right close, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing for my body to basically amplify. But um, if I put them in here, again, the, the shielded one just frankly does have, uh, have less noise and uh, doesn't react as much to proximity. So uh, that, that, does, that does make me happy. And there, again, there's side by side. That one's up to 0.28, still at 0.15. And again, if I put my hand here, Really see that one gets up to like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. This one's still 0.13. And to, uh, to drive the point home even further, here I've got it plugged into USB and it's not made an appreciable difference uh, to the noise on this one. Again, still roughly around 0.15 or so. And uh, let me show you with the other one. Again, with the unshielded device, look how much higher the noise is now, right? So the uh, on battery, right, 0 0.015, plugged into the USB, 0 0.11. So that's, that's the difference that shielding makes. And then again, if I do that proximity effect, you can see it really shoots up. And as soon as I unplug it, hard to do this with one hand, but as soon as I unplug it, look how much the noise falls off. Versus the one that shielded, again, less noise. Even if I put it, you know, same proximity, it just, it's not picking up near as much interference. And even when I plug it in, because of the shielding now, it, it doesn't pick up all that, uh, that noise. So, okay, I feel much better now because <laughs> testing in that other room, I was like, oh crap, it didn't do any good. But yeah, it, it definitely made a, a difference, especially when running it off the, the USB that's plugged into the wall, that 60 hertz hum. I guess, you know, just the, the noise coming off that, or it could be the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth that the, uh, the laptop's got. But yeah, really, really, really really cut down on the noise. So yeah, all right, well, that'll wrap this up. I know it's kind of a weird one, but uh, you know, this is, this is how the prototyping and the testing goes. Iteratively just checking stuff over and over and over, trying to make it a little better. And it looks like maybe today I've done something that has made it a little bit better. If you got any feedback or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.